34 of you sitting in Assam in the lap of the BJP will appoint Gugavli as the whip and then come to court and say, look, we've already removed you. Under what power? Sorry for interrupt. This may not be relevant for the... Sir, president. if you don't mind, sir, I, you, you know, throughout... It, through, uh, if, sir, I mean, I, you know, I really, I really will appreciate. You people have... You, my colleagues have answered for five days. I have not uttered a word throughout. So please allow me to at least argue in my own way. Saturday, Sunday. So, but you know, appointment of we will Rajya Sabha, Lok Sabha will it would never be over. Will you, we will curtailed you? our arguments. You know, rejoin them or not, appointment of we in Lok Sabha. Well, if you want, I can sit down and the court can decide, since you are the master of the ceremonies here. So, Malaj, because that was an argument made, Malaj, because that justifies, what they say, that justifies the fact that Gugavle is the whip and he issued directions and he has to be obeyed. Malaj, till the fourth, who was the political party recognized in the, in the, in the assembly? Shiv Sena. That was the political party. Who was the whip, Malaj? Sunil Prabhu. So the second submission that I wish to make to your Lordships is... First and second are more or less both men. Basically saying that uh, whips are actually appointed only by the political party. That's right. That's it's a simple point. That's simple, very simple point. It's appointed, so Malaj, the whip has to be obeyed. Sunil Prabhu had to be obeyed. You made this point. Yes. On third, Sunil Prabhu issued a whip that you cannot vote for the BJP candidate as speaker. Whip was disobeyed. He cannot appoint himself as the leader because Ajay Chaudhary became the leader on the 21st of June itself when we removed Eknath Shinde. That removal of Eknath Shinde and appointment of Ajay Chaudhary was conveyed to the Speaker of the House. The Speaker of the House recognized it. So how could the governor call Eknak Shinde? Who is Eknak Shinde? I am talking in constitutional terms. Argument is Eknak Shinde was the group leader. Where was the under which law? Which group? You can't arrogate yourself the powers of the party sitting in Assam, being entertained by another party, publicly saying that another party is fully supporting me and changing the constitution of the house as if you are the political party. That's the second, which I will argue, Malaj. I won't take too long, Malaj, just so that we reduce the level of controversy. Number three. My learned friend, my colleague, Mr. Kaul Malaj, argued that I am the party. He says, I am the party. I am the Shiv Sena. Malaj, on, on what constitutional basis can a member, a, then a people with 34 members say they are the Shiv Sena? Are they recognized by the election commission? As the Shiv Sena? Shiv Sena is a registered political party with a political leadership, Malaj, intimated to the Election Commission under Section 29A of the Representation of People's Act. The moment the recognition takes place under Section 29A, that is the decision of the Election Commission which is final. That decision was not overturned by anybody. when all this happened till the 4th of July. So, Balaj, how can Eknath Shinde's group of 34 say, I am the political party? It has no constitutional basis. And for five days we have heard this, Malaj. I am not saying 
that I have split. I am not saying that I am the faction. I am saying I am Shiv Sena. So if I say I am Shiv Sena, I am Shiv Sena in constitutional terms. Cannot be. Next point, Mullahs, which is even more important. Mullahs, your lordships will remember that under paragraph 3 of the 10th schedule, which was deleted later by the 91st Constitutional Amendment, the expression is that if there is a faction in the legislative party arising out of a split in the political party, and that faction represents one third of the legislative party, then that will be a valid defense against a disqualification petition. What it is. So what does the expression used there? I am a faction of the legislative party. Resulting from a split in the political party. Right, Malaj? Now, he says that we 34 are the political party. Mm. That's his case. He says, I'm not a faction. There's no split. But Malaj, when he goes to the election commission, what does paragraph 15 say? That if there are two factions of a political party who claim to be that political party, it doesn't use the word split. Then the commission will decide which is that political party. So before you, they say, I am the political party. And before the election commission, they say, I am a faction. Because if he is the political party, he need not go to the election commission. Why is he going to the election commission? He says there is no difference between the legislative party and the political party, which is, which is Malaj, a mockery of the 10th schedule itself, where the whole purpose, Malaj, of differentiating was that members of the legislative party will not do acts which amount to voluntarily giving up membership of the party or vote against the, uh, against the whip, which will result in defection. The whole purpose of the 10th schedule is to differentiate between the legislative party and the political party. And the whole argument is, there is no difference between the legislative party and the political party. I am the political party. But if you are the political party, why did you move? The election commission? Well, let's take, for example, three people out of five belonging to the Congress party. They are a majority. They go to the governor of Goa and say, I am the political party. We are the majority. Topple this government. Numbers are stacked against. Government will be toppled. They will never go to the election commission. Why? Because there is the Congress party outside. What will the governor do? Governor, you think, Malaj, on their logic, government will, governor will have to call a trust vote because the best way, Bomai says, the best way is to find out from a trust vote. Malaj, all judgments of law are contextual. Unless there's an underlying basic principle, like basic structure. Otherwise, all judgments are contextual. When your Lordship Smullers decided on Shivraj Chauhan, the context was what? 22 resignations. Context. And six were accepted. And, and ah, yes, six accepted. Not only that, 13th of March, governor tells him to hold the, to, uh, to, to, to call the assembly, which is called on 14th March, and hold the trust vote on the 14th. The chief minister says, no, I adjourned it. He didn't put it in the agenda. He adjourned it to 26th March, if your lordships will remember. So he adjourns it to 26th March. Then the petitions are filed. Say, so how have you adjourned it to 26th of March? Because the governor told you, matter comes to this court, and your lordship says, look, this is the best, because all those 22 letters of resignation are with the governor. Then your lordship said another thing, which I'll read later to your lordship. Your lordship said, as far as the disqualification is concerned, who stopped you from disqualifying? That's paragraph 82 of your lordship's judgment, where your lordship said this. Nothing stopped the governor, uh, to, the uh, speaker to disqualify if he wanted to disqualify. 
but once people have resigned, so it was in the context of 22 resignations, context of six of them having been accepted on the 14th of March itself on the advice of the chief minister. Speaker accepts them. And your lordships ask the question, what's the difference between those six and the other 16? There's no difference. They have come, the signatures are there, they have given to the governor, what else can we do? And who stopped you from disqualifying? What has what Shivra Chauhan got to do with this? This matter? There's no bearing. Why dealing with what? We're dealing with 34 people, which is a faction. They can't all say they're not a party, that they are the party, it's because they can't be the party. It's a faction. How does the governor recognize a faction? Under what constitutional parameters does the government say, I recognize you? And therefore, I'll call a floor test? It's not a game of numbers. So if you actually hold their submissions to be correct, you're bringing back the regime of Ayagam Gyaram, because anybody can collect the numbers in the manner that they are collected nowadays, whisk them away to any other state, keep them in, uh, in comfort, I don't want to use a stronger word, and then let's come back and topple the government. And you'll have no recourse. Next is even more important. You're saying three-fourths is also a split. Yeah, exactly. According to you, even three-fourths will be split. That's correct. Fact, still a faction. That's why three was eliminated. You can't have sort of uh, factions moving up, moving out because we know how these numbers are collected. Then I remember I, I, I showed you Kulip Nayar's case, Malas, where all that was set out. More important, Malas, they have only on the uh, today in court argued that they are the party. <laughs> 